Well, the uh, part has arrived to get this uh, Schumacher battery charger back up and running again. I uh, went through a pretty basic diagnostic procedure and figured out what the issue was. And the issue basically is a bad selector switch. The ticking you hear is the timer that's turned on because these two switches are basically wired in series. So this has to be on before this one can be turned on. The uh, new part is right here. I sourced this from Century Tool, and there's the part number. And there's what the back of it looks like. And basically, what I ended up doing is just studying everything in here and figuring out that what this mode selector does is basically selects different taps on the primary of this large power transformer. It's kind of uh, a weird setup that it has. It acts like it has two secondaries in series with each other and then a single primary with multiple taps. And it looks like it's very well designed. They have what probably is going to be a thermistor down inside of here uh, making contact with the primary winding or maybe the core not sure which a thermistor is basically a device with a negative temperature coefficient so as the uh, transformer heats up or it might be a positive temperature coefficient I can't really remember but as, it, as the transformer heats up this um, will actually open up and break the circuit it might not really be a thermistor it might be a, a thermal fuse if nothing else probably what it is is actually a fuse but the power supply actually works very well I basically went through um, all the mode selections on here and um, wrote down what the uh, various taps actually do so I can um, reference that for the new switch and we'll go ahead and turn this thing on I don't have the uh, fan hooked up just to make the video quality a little bit better because that fan is kind of loud, but it does work. It actually works pretty good considering the condition of the chassis. That just runs on uh, 120, just a shaded pole motor there, kind of like what you have in your bathroom vent. And we'll go ahead and take some measurements. So. 6 volt should be the red wire and all this switch does is it just switches 120 volts to each one of these taps on here and we'll go ahead and measure the red and we have about 120 and we'll go to 12 volt 2 amp and that is supposed to be blue And sure enough it is. Next one is the 12 volt 10 amp. And that we can see is supposed to be the white. Which is back here. And we only have, well, we've got about 120 there. That's actually um, what the problem is, is that this switch will sometimes not make the connection with this 12-volt, uh, 10 amp circuit here, which makes the charger appear to be dead, but it's obviously working now. It's really intermittent. Contacts are probably dirty. Then we'll go to the 12 volt 50 amp. And that is supposed to be brown. Sure enough. And 12 volt 225 amp. Yeah, that's going to be yellow.
So as of now, all the taps are working. I'm going to go ahead and uh, unplug everything before I forget. But this white tap right here is, is intermittent and you can kind of feel that this switch is a little bit on the grungy side. The 12 volt 10 amp is probably what was used the most. So we'll go ahead and I can't pull it off with one hand. But we'll go ahead and take the switch out of here and uh, see if we can get this thing fixed. I'm just going to take it out and uh, move one connection over at a time. And I forgot to show you guys how this thing is mounted. Because you're not going to be able to see that. It's pretty easy. There's actually a uh, spring-loaded lock on here, like a twist lock. This part here is under some tension. And basically, when this, these two tangs right here hold it in the chassis, you can see better right here. And there is a little tang I'm talking, I was talking about. So what we have to do is we have to push that guy in, twist it, and it should just pop right on out. That way we'll have better access to it. we have the uh, switch free. I have everything written down but I'm going to go ahead and uh, just change everything over one by one just to kind of air proof the process a little bit. We're just going to swap these connections around. After dropping the switch on the floor Okay, the old switch is free. And now this thing's ready to be inserted back into the cabinet. And we just hold it in there and twist. You should hear a definite positive click there. Everything is nice and solid. And we'll put our knob back on. Sounds better. And that's basically all there is to this repair. And that's what it looks like. Pretty straightforward and easy. Go ahead and energize it. And we'll go 6 volt 50 out. And we'll just double check our work, make sure I got enough of the wires reversed or anything like that. So that's supposed to be applying power to the red conductor. And we'll go. 12 volt 2 amp. 
blue. And the troublesome 12 volt 10 amp. And then we, I think that's going to be white. Yep. 12 volt 50 amp. Red. Or t no, 12 volt 50 amp, which was brown. And the last setting, 225 amp. Yellow. So it looks like I'm applying voltage to all the proper taps. Everything is uh, hooked up correctly and none of the connections reversed. I'm going to go ahead and uh, test this on a battery. an actual car battery that um, is capable of taking some current versus just a you know a small battery like that or anything and now what I want to do I'm kinda curious as to what the voltages are going to be with this thing going across the battery like that. So the battery right now, open circuit voltage is 12 and a half volts. I don't want to Go over the 6 volt 50 amp section with the battery connected. So I'll start out at the 12 volt 2 amp and then we'll go back in. And the voltage is coming up steadily. The bad thing about this charger is it's all a manual charger, so you can really overcharge a battery very easily. There's no voltage regulator in here at all. These devices here are basically circuit breakers uh, that come in handy, especially when you're using this as a starter charger versus just a regular charger. You've got to protect this transformer somehow. It's already approaching 13 volts now. So absent a uh, automatic charger, which I do have, I've got a small 12 volt 10 amp automatic charger I mainly use just to, you know, keep the batteries up during the winter time. I would definitely use the uh, 12 volt 2 amp setting. I don't think that's going to damage um, any uh, PCNs inside of the uh, the modern cars or blow the radio out or anything like that. But I do want to see what this thing does under load with a battery because I think that some of these other selections here are just a little bit on the high side as far as voltage. Let's switch to 10 amp. And we're already basically right at the maximum of what a car alternator would be putting out. It wouldn't really be putting out much more than that on a cold day. It really should be around 14.2. Now this battery, um, when I first hooked it up, was basically almost fully charged. It might have been a little run down but not much. If you're uh, in a situation where you would be using this thing to uh, start a car, um, this voltage might be a little bit lower than that because the battery would be taking some of that current for itself to try to charge it, but that's that's not a voltage I would be comfortable with hooking up to a modern car. And I think the situation is going to get worse when I go to 50 amps. 
Yeah, 16.5. You hear that? That's the electrolyte boiling. I can't leave this on too much longer. Now we've got a 225 amps. And we've up to 18 volts. And I shut it off just now. I hope you can hear that. If I had left it on like that, um, it definitely would uh, damage the battery. So I think that I'm gonna, if I ever use this thing, which I actually already have, I used it to start my uh, riding lawnmower, um, which was perfectly fine on the the 50 amp scale. I don't think I would use this on a modern car pushing out 18 volts. That's just a little bit too much. You, you definitely would damage a lot of the electronics on the car and wish you hadn't. Um, so this is going to be a good, it was a good find. I found this on the side of the road. I cleaned it up as best I could. It's not ever going to look like new again. It's just, you know, obviously been outside in somebody's barn for a lot of its life or maybe all of its life. The voltmeters and amp meters are kind of faded from being out in the sun. But uh, it'll definitely come in handy with some of the older cars I have that are not computer controlled, like the uh, 72 Lincoln Continental or the uh, 1970 Mercedes. But anything other than that, if I need to uh, jump start the engine, like on the 91 Cadillac Brown that I did the uh, transmission on, uh, if that battery went bad, I would uh, definitely have to uh, charge it up first out of the vehicle and then put in the vehicle and uh, try to start it that way versus hooking this thing up to it. So if you do have one of these battery chargers or something similar to it, I'd be very careful about um, using this on a, uh, a modern car if you don't want uh, a lot of trouble. But anyway, I wanted to make sure that um, I um, got as much of this film as I could. Basically, this is all one shot. And just to show you um, the most common failure on these things, I would have actually figured it'd be this switch right here and not the mode switch. But basically, I'm very happy that the uh, most expensive part of the unit, the power transformer, is okay. And all I needed was basically a $25 mode switch, and you guys saw how easy it was to uh, change that out. I got that from CenturyTools.net and um, saved quite a bit of money. I got lucky that the uh, rectifier uh, ended up being okay. Nothing wrong with it. Even though the diodes look like they've seen better days. But um, all that matters is what's inside, as long as that works. I've got a uh, pretty good battery charger for a rainy day. I'm going to go ahead and put this thing back together, put the wheels on it, and get out there in the garage.